or actually I, I say how you all, but it comes out with the how you all doing, like uh, <laughs> with a little bit of the New York. You talking to me? Um, <clears throat> it's a real treat uh, to be here uh, at NTC and uh, uh, to be uh, rooting my my dog uh, fellows on. Uh, we've, we've had, uh, it's just great to come out and to, uh, to uh, be with the young kids and, and experiencing this whole thing. Uh, and to be sharing with some old friends um, and getting to meet folks that I've known for a long time again and uh, listening to, to uh, new friends, uh, getting to hear Rex uh, in concert last night and then in the class today and enjoying what he had to say. Um, it's just been a really great time, so thank you very much for those that uh, thought about inviting me to come. Uh, guys, you want to have a seat? You okay? Yeah. My mind has gone in lots of different directions uh, for what today should be about. And um, I thought there was going to be some folks that I'd work with, like in a master class situation, and that, that wasn't uh, the way it was going to go. And so I, th I was trying to think of what I could talk about today. And as I say, my mind goes in lots of directions. I've, I hinted last night uh, at the journey that I've been on in the last couple of years. It has not been a pleasant journey, and I'm happy to talk about that. Uh, there's no secrets to, to that. Um, it's been an interesting couple of years for me. Um, but our God has provided, and God has uh, opened up a new avenue for me. I'm thrilled to be at the University of Georgia, um, working with uh, great brass colleagues. Brandon is here. Um, just really, um, just a, a, great, a great school. I've enjoyed working with the, my colleagues there, the environment. Love working with the kids. Uh, we've actually started, um, or, or restarted a brass band. Uh, I wouldn't get to do brass band if I was at a conservatory. They, they would look down on that kind of thing. But that's my whole background, and so it's been a really exciting thing to be part of that uh, process. Uh, it's been very, very exciting. Um, so I'm happy to chat with you about all of that, and we can do that. I'll, I'll, I'll offer opportunities for you to talk and ask questions and things like that. But the other thing that I thought about was to talk to you a little bit about uh, a talk that I gave at a class that we had at UGA called Music in the Real World. Um, and and uh, that covers a wide scope, and they bring in a lot of different folk to, uh, to do that class. But they asked if I would talk about audition uh, preparation. And uh, I, I said, yeah, I'll do that. Um, the truth is, I haven't had many auditions. I took uh, two auditions in my life. Um, <laughs> But I can only tell you what I did, although it was a long time ago. I sort of had to recreate the whole thing and say, now what did I do? Uh, but it was kind of interesting. But I, I started in thinking about it. I looked up some quotes, and I always love to have quotes. I guess that's the preacher in me coming out a little bit. It's always good to have somebody to quote. Alexander Graham Bell said this, before anything else, preparation is the key to success. Abraham Lincoln said, I will prepare and someday my chance will come. And Benjamin Franklin said, by failing to prepare, prepare, you're preparing to fail. And we heard a lot about that today with Rex as he was talking about uh, practice and, and improvisation and different things like that and how he prepared for a new piece. And, and a lot of us have been through that type of thing as I had to prepare for the Aaron Kernis concerto, which was the last concerto that I, that I played. Um, and a uh, brand new piece, you know, how, how do you prepare for something that you can't listen to? It's interesting. But back to the, the goal of talking about orchestral auditions. Um, and I've, besides the two auditions that I've been on, I've had more experience being on the other side of listening to folks play. Uh, play. And, uh, and so you would say, well, what is it the committee's looking for? The goal of uh, the auditioner is to listen for a few things. And one of those things is sound. We're li always listening for full, beautiful, great, good sound. That is what wins the day. Sound wins at all times. Uh, can the applicant uh, color their sound? Is their sound consistent uh, and even through the ranges? Uh, can he color the sound using 
uh, brights. Uh, I used to refer to the sound that, that I love listening to Bud Herseth play. He could sound like a hot knife through butter. And at other times, he could sound like thick cream. And, uh, and I, and, but whatever he was doing, whatever the, whatever the, uh, whatever the expression that he was using, sound was always the focal point. The other thing that the committee is lis listening for and looking for is rhythm. Does the applicant understand good rhythm? Now, I would use the word strict rhythm. Can they be, uh, and then on counter to that, can they be soloistic in their interpretation? And the third aspect of that is can they adapt? So I would want to play something generally. I, at some point in the audition, it's going to be required of me to play something in strict rhythm. You can imagine playing that in bad rhythm. The poor snare drummer, he'd be whacking you over the head with the stick. Uh, you know, he's not going to want to do that. It's, it wants to be in good rhythm. So the, so the audition committee is going to want to hear that. But at the other times, they're going to want to hear how, how soloistic can you be. So you want to demonstrate that. And they will, uh, at, they possibly will ask you to do something differently, and I always took that as them just trying to see how pliable I was, and uh, and so I need then to be able to adapt upon the request. So good sound, rhythm, intonation. Does the applicant have good self intonation from top to bottom? Are they in tune with themselves, or is it one of those kind of weird scales where you just can't seem to find where they're going? Are they aware of the proclivities? I love that word. Are they aware of the proclivities of their instrument? Do they know that the G on the top of the staff is going to go sharp? And can they hear that, or are they just going to play it and you're just going to have to deal with it as a listener? Uh, no, you, you want to hear that they're making adjustments as they're, as they're playing through that scale. And uh, again, the same question comes, can they adapt upon request? I'll tell you a little story here. One of my one, of one of my auditions uh, at the New York Philharmonic, um, the, the audition had gone on all day. It had been, we'd been back and forth and back and forth. It came down to a couple of us and we were passing each other on and off the stage to go out and play lick after lick after lick. It was not pleasant. It, there was nothing nice about this. But I remember as I walked out there after the day was almost done and I was asked for the umpteenth time to play the opening of Zarathustra. And uh, as I was getting ready to play, uh, someone in the committee, who will remain nameless, um, said to me, um, the high C sounds a little flat. Can you make it a little sharper? And I thought, well, what a strange request. If anything, I would think I'd be going sharp. So they were thinking it was flat, so obviously I'm doing too good a job. But that was, uh, <laughs> that, that was the mindset, although I was getting a little ticked off that this was now going to be the umpteenth time of playing it. So I proceeded to play, ba -ba -bum. I played the whole intro, of course, and then ba -ba -bum, bum, bum, bum. <laughs> and I cut off and I said in a very angry voice, is that sharp enough? At which case, James Chambers, who was the proctor at that time, said to me, shh, shh, shh. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, I don't know. So that was, uh, maybe that was my first trumpet head coming out, a little bit of the aggression. That, maybe that won me the job, I don't know. <laughs> so, yeah, as a New Yorker, all right. Um, but uh, musical awareness, uh, and can they adapt on requests? So that's what we're looking for on that side of the screen. 